it's Ivy Slater, and you're listening to Her Success Story Podcast, a show where gutsy businesswomen share their success journey. Welcome, Nella Bloom. I'm so excited to have some time to really chat with you. And You've done some amazing things. Uh, So as opposed to just going into your whole bio, I'm just going to tell our listeners a little brief overview and give them a chance to have an opportunity to get to know you. that work? That's great. And thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here with you. Thanks. So, Nella, you're an attorney, right? I am. You're an attorney. You started your own business. I did. These are some of these highlights. You did, right? You have a child, you have a little boy, who's not always not so little anymore. <laughs> That's right. And you, you know, in a, de- in a world that so many people are moving and grooving to different parts of the country and different parts of the world so quickly and easily, you were born, raised in, Philadelphia, in the Philadelphia area, chosen to open your practice in that area, although you are, um, you practice law in Philadelphia, Delaware, and New Jersey, but you, your home base is in Philly, and you've chosen to raise your kid in Philly. That, that is all so correct. That's yeah. pretty cool. Well, that's yeah, pretty cool. Right. And thanks for taking a little time out of what I am sure is a very busy schedule. It is absolutely my pleasure. I am, I'm, very, uh, I'm very excited to speak with you. And uh, let's, well, what can I tell you? What would you like to know? So, okay, I have, I have, my mind is going so fast. I have so many questions. Um, one of the things I found fascinating, so you've been an attorney since 08. Your son was born in what year? I started my practice, or started practicing law in 2006, and my kid was born right. in, in uh, 2010. 2010. Um, Yet yeah. you decided to open your own business and go out on your own with like almost a, an oversized toddler under your feet. What yes. that, what kind of gumption did that take and how did you make those decisions? Well, it was it, sometimes the decisions take you. You don't you they make you, you don't make them. Um this time the decision made me because I got laid off from my law yeah. firm job. It was and I can't say that I was particularly uh taken aback by it or necessarily all that upset by it. Um, my former colleagues may, uh, may be a little surprised to hear that, but I was working at a very lovely law firm in Philadelphia uh, and in, in, it's based in, in New Jersey, but there was an outpost in Philadelphia and that's where I was working. And I had been hired to be in the corporate bankruptcy department. Unfortunately, I was I started there in 2012, and by about 2011, a lot of corporate bankruptcy work had just totally dried up. There had been a huge boom in 2008 with the market crash, and then after that, there was really not very, there was not a lot of new work coming in. So cases. So how rude! Companies weren't closing down and going bankrupt, which was a problem for the firm. It was so it was so awful. I don't know why they didn't close down, but they didn't. That's all right. So I was doing mostly litigation, which is not something that I particularly enjoy. I find it very, uh, very hard. I bring it home with me a lot. I bring the emotions and the, and the, and the uh, anxiety home with me. So there I was. I love that you're saying that because I think what some of the challenges in, in living, you know, you and I have talked before and we talked about like living this great life. Um, and then how do you not take, especially when you're an attorney and an attorney, the troubles of your clients to bed with you at night? It is, it's really difficult. Um, and the per- not just the troubles of your clients, but the personalities of um, those who are also involved in the case, whether they're on the same side as you or not. Um, it can be very difficult with uh, where part of your job is that you get to argue with people. I mean, some people love it. They think it's amazing. I am not one of those people. I just do. It's not for me. So I would come home from this job at where I was yelling at people all day and they were yelling back at me. 
And there's this little kid, this little tiny, at the time I started at that firm, he was 15 months old. He could, he had just started walking. So I had this little itty bitty kid. And when they said, you know, there's not enough to keep you busy in bankruptcy, I said, that's totally fine. So I made uh, absolutely no move to find another job because I was so convinced I never wanted to be a lawyer again. Um, and I spent three weeks being a stay at home mom, which is, I am convinced one of the hardest jobs and I'm just not cut out for it. And then I thought to myself, well, what am I going to do now? Like I got to do something. So and boy, right over- is that a question so many people, especially women, come to the realization of what am I going to do now? What am I going to do next? Who? And you've kind of asked this question: Who am I now in all of this? Absolutely. Am I? Am I? And it's it's also kind of a blow to. It wasn't. I I, I don't want to say that it was it was um, devastating to leave. It wasn't. But it was also it, it was a little demoralizing because. Even if the entire bankruptcy department was kind of shifting at the time, it still meant that I lost my job. And Mm -hmm. I know that, and it's, it's hard to lose your job. It's not pleasant. That's why people don't like getting laid off, you know? So, um, right around the same time, my mother or my father had retired. He had been retired for about a week and my mother called me (laughs) up. It was, it was, it was like kismet. My mom calls me up and she says, get him off my sofa. I can't deal with him right now. He's always here. And I said, I'm sorry he's always there. She said, whatever you do next, involve him. And I thought, well, there's an idea. So I called him up. I said, let's go have coffee. And we did. And I said to him, look, I'm thinking of starting my own practice, doing things the way I want to do them, working with the clients I want to work with, not taking on matters just because it's money in the door. I said, I'm going to be calling you all the time anyway. Let's be honest. <laughs> I've never done this before. <laughs> and you've had your, and you've had a practice for a very long time. So you can either come on board with me or I can go solo. It's entirely up to you. And he said, okay, let me think about it. So he thought about it for a couple of days. He calls me back. He says, okay, we'll be bloom and bloom, but I'm bloom. And I said, okay, you can be bloom. I can be bloom. He meant the first bloom. Um, And so because it's a very, it's very tough. His name comes first. His is the first bloom in bloom and bloom, which is my law practice. So I have to ask you this because I came from a background of uh, early on, I negotiated with my father about 27 years old Mm -hmm. to come in and join his printing company. And those negotiations were rather tough. So I I have Mm. to honestly ask, um, how is the negotiation as far as, you know, one, your two attorneys mm-hmm. is, and I'm not looking at your finances, I'm looking at mm-hmm. the, the strategy, the negotiation, the negotiation and the decisions when you're dealing with two generations, you're dealing with a male and a female, and you're dealing with a family relationship. Mm. So was it yeah. cut and dry and straightforward of, okay, it's 50-50? Is it... Um, and again, we're not, I'm not looking to get you in the final. I'm looking to understand conceptually the relationship between father and daughter and bloom and bloom kind of is this an equal partnership and how do you, um, well, it is, w- go ahead. <laughs> oh, sure. It is, I will say right away, it is not an equal partnership at all. It is a fiefdom and I'm in charge. Ah. Yeah, he, as far as I'm concerned, he came on board my firm, and I think he would say the same. He he has always been a wonderful advisor, but he is mostly retired. So all of the, the vast majority of of the networking is me. The vast majority of the work product is me. Um, When I need him, he is available. He's always available. If I need to talk to him about something, if he has special expertise in something, if I need him to review Mm -hmm a letter or bounce ideas off of him, that he's always available yeah. to me. Yeah. But it was a very cut and dried negotiation. I think it was a very different circumstance because uh, we were both starting from nothing and he wasn't so sure that he wanted to do anything in the first place. I think I might've twisted his arm a little, or maybe my mother did. I'm not sure. 
it might have been her <laughs> instead of me. It, 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 it could have been. <laughs> well, you have to get off the couch so you could go somewhere. Why don't you go to my daughter's office? <laughs> That's right. There. Go. Go talk to her. Take that phone call. Check your email. Exactly. So in so you were laid off. You started your own business. How old was your son at this point? He was, when I started up, he was three. He was almost four. So he was a little guy. Wow. And how did you, how did you manage building a book of business, which attorneys and many, many people do, um, with a little one under your feet? Mm-hmm. And you've never, done, you've never been a business owner before. Like, what were the challenges at this point? For you uh, personally, we all face different ones. <laughs> absolutely. My, my primary challenge was childcare and in fact still is. Um, my, and it's because so much of what we do to build our businesses is meet people and build mm-hmm. the connections and keep the connections. So I was, I, and I would book every, as many breakfasts and lunches as I possibly could. I used to joke that my job was to go have lunch with people because I couldn't go to events after work. Um, I could maybe go to one event every week. Now I can go to one event every week, more or less. Um, but that's because I have been able to negotiate with my parents that uh, they do one evening a week of pickup, which is essential. It really is essential to my business. Um, right. and, and to what I'm able to do, uh, I ha- so, so that has, that I think is the, that has been one of the biggest challenges in terms of starting a, starting a business with a little kid. And I have to ask, I was ask because I think our career paths, our business paths, our life paths, there's at least some twists and turns that keep mm-hmm. us on our toes. Yes. So what? Can you identify or would you share any, anything that, any significant surprises? Like it's like, oh, my goodness. Well, and it's good, bad, or indifferent. But I just, you know, I truly think as we navigate all this in, in building a fabulous life for ourselves mm-hmm. um, with family, with a career, whether you own your business or you're navigating a career path, it's like every so often it's like, oh, wow, that's a surprise. Yeah. Um, actually it, my, the biggest surprise and probably the biggest challenge came, uh, only less than a year after I started up, uh, my husband was unexpectedly, uh, hospitalized for quite a while. Um, so he, he had a, he had a health issue and he had to be, and, and he had to be in a hospital. And that meant that I was single parenting at the same time. And it was over Christmas. And so that meant that all of those Christmas holiday parties that I had booked into, you know, the first couple I was okay with, they, but I, I had to ask my parents to cover a lot of childcare and some neighbors pitched in and that was wonderful. Um, I live in a one, I live in one of those neighborhoods where like we all understand that it, we are the, the village is raising the kids. So we have a whole okay. bunch of kids in the village. It's wonderful. It really is. Um, so the neighbors. So those kitchen, are not extinct. <laughs> those pardon? villages are not extinct. They're still they are, out there today. There's one here in South Philadelphia, and I can I I am telling you the truth right now. It is not extinct. So um, for a for a couple of weeks, I could I could still have lunches. I could go to events, and then slowly but surely, the strain of being a single parent. I. I was not able to manage it. And I'm being totally honest here. As the time went on, I became less and less functional. Um, and I was able to go to less and less. Um, some days I, I got out of bed enough to take the kid to school. And then I went back to bed and then I would go, right. And then I would go pick him up. And that was what I could do for the day. Um, and I think what was challenging for me then was not only that I had to be a single parent, but also trying to be kind to myself, um, which is something uh, we're not all that good <laughs> as a, I, I'm not sure that anyone's very good at being kind to himself or herself. I think that it's something that takes practice. And, and I tried to be as kind to me as I possibly could for that time. Cause I just, I couldn't handle very much. 
that's, that's completely understandable. Yeah. And when you're thrown those kind of curveballs, um, you show up as best you can, no judgment. Mm-hmm. And I think sometimes some of the hardest things we do is release the judgment not to others but to ourselves. I think that's I think that's right, and it's one of the it's not only one of the kindest. I I totally agree. I think it's not only kind to yourself to release the judgment, but to uh, not judge those who are judging, because um, I think judgment comes from a but it doesn't come from a from a place where people are happy. So. If someone has, if someone had said, you know, you should really go do stuff, you should really get, get back out there. It, it's not, it, it's not them talking to me. It would have been them talking to themselves and saying, I, I am afraid of your, I am afraid of having your situation happen to me. So yeah. I have to ask you this. You're obviously a very busy woman. Okay. Yes. So clearly you're out there, you're doing the thing, the, 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 Steps it takes to build a business. You're doing, you're showing up for as a mom, a family person with your family, etc. What do you do for you? What brings you joy? How do you, how do you detox? Oh, uh, a couple of different things. Um, I, I like to get acupuncture, which not everyone likes. Um, I was a little wary until I tried it, but I find it very relaxing. Um, and on a day-to-day basis, what I do to relax is, uh, so I have pets. I have two cats. And some people are not cat people, which is fine. I think that pets are very important. They give you something that, um, not, they, they give you something that sometimes humans don't have time to give you, which is, uh, they give you as much love as they can. Even cats. <laughs> I have a whole bunch of clients who are cat people. I haven't gotten quite there yet, but I'll join you in the acupuncture any day of the week. All right. And there's no need to, (laughs) you don't need to pet the cats. My cats will happily come investigate you and wait for pats from you, you know. Um, And I, and I, and I like to hang out with my child and we, and, and just be silly with him. And that's a joy. That's it a joy. Is wonderful. Yes. So, one thing. Any any particular you know for women who are out there, they're the go getters, who the women who want it all, the women who are listening today, who's like, I'm gonna you know I'm gonna build a business, I'm gonna get to the president of this company, I'm gonna be a, a mother, I'm gonna be able to go get acupuncture and not worry what time it is. Uh huh. Um, any tips or, or advice that you would share that has been a benefit to you? Um, when I look at tips or advice, I, I, I kind of shy away from the word advice most often because advice is like what I think you should do. But mm-hmm. tips of, hey, this worked for me. You might want to check this out. You might like it. You might not, a.k.a. I love the acupuncture tip. <laughs> well, sure. Um, I, one of the things that I have – that I've tried to keep in mind for myself. And this is, this is a controversial opinion. I say that. So take it with a pinch of salt. Good. I like it already. (laughs) All right. There we go. Um, I, I like to, and it it comes back to, to sort of being tolerant and kind to about your own, uh, the limits of what you can do at any given time, which is I can do anything I want. I just can't do it all at once. There may be some people who can, and if they can, God bless them, because I have not figured out that secret <laughs> at all. But um, I, if I want to build the business and have a giant portfolio of clients, and then great. If that's how I want to define my success, then that's amazing. And I can do it. And if I want to go to every school play and every practice uh, and every meet for my kids judo and jujitsu classes great i don't think those things are necessarily uh i don't think that i can do both at the same time because taking out the time to be at every practice means that there is time that you have that is not out there now where you're not at networking you're not doing work you're doing something else with the same time you have so 
I think what I, what I say is, you know, I can do everything. I just can't do it all at once. I like that. Thank you. I like that. I think, I think that's awesome. And so, and that's how and why you're joining us today is because you get, Nella, you truly get, we don't have to do it all at once. And we can actually live in a joyful journey while we're building a great business, career, life overall. I, yes. So thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. This has been wonderful. Um, can you let our listeners know how they can find out more about you? Or Absolutely. How can they find out more about Nella Bloom and Bloom and Bloom? Ah, Bloom and Bloom, yes. So I have a website. I made it myself mostly, and it is so cute. You're going to love it. It is bloomandbloom.net, which is bloom, spelled like the flower, B-L-O-O-M, and then the word and, and then another bloom, B-L-O-O-M, dot net. Nice. Well, I encourage you all to check Nella out. She looks adorable on the website. She's oh, thank you. smart. And she's a woman who has it all together. And I have to say the one other tidbit that I found so much fun when we were, you know, talking earlier is that you're a fan of live events. So just a little something, anything in 2018, any live events we should have our eyes on? I don't know about 2018. In a couple of weeks. Ooh, next week. Is it next week? I'm going to go see LCD Sound System. Um, they reunited. And that for will probably be passed by the time we air. Maybe, Is yes. there a way for people to stay connected to you, to know what you're about and follow you as yourself to see where you're showing up? Uh, yes, I am on LinkedIn. Um, oh. There's only And there's only one Nella Bloom that I know of that's on LinkedIn. I think I'm only one of two Nella Blooms in the entire country. So I have a distinct nice. name. Yep. Awesome. Well, thank you for being here. Check out bloomandbloom.net. Check out Nella Bloom on LinkedIn. A great woman to follow. A woman who has it, um, has it all because she learned has learned how to prioritize on what's important to her. So, thanks again for joining us today, Nella. Thank you. Take care. Bye, everyone. I know that it's my-